very beautifully, which yeah. is by burning on unit one. Yeah, unit that's the... Unit two is the one that's been burned one time. Unit one's been burned twice. Unit two is the one that um, actually had all of the grasses there throughout yeah. the summer, and right? And it still has yeah. a lot of uh, wild flowers in there, or some are invasive. We're not going to go out spot kill invasive looking things or anything like that. Right. But we're going to be encouraging the natural native plants and supplementing it. Unit three is going to be another different ball game because it's just now been cut. It's going to get burned, but it has a real invasion of cow repair, which we have not faced before. Yeah. yeah. And people think, pear, oh, I can come pick my pear trees uh, there and the plums to eat. And of course, all the plums and pears <laughs> are half an inch in size, you know. Uh, uh, and we are getting quite a bit of comment among the public of, why are you cutting all the trees now? What's going on? Because they're right out in the front of where we're working. I got hit twice at a couple of meetings because they, they saw me out there doing something. What's going on? What's going on? Okay, so you all will need to spread, be patient. It takes a long time to grow. Prairie, when people ask you yeah, some questions, please help us, uh, let them calm down, and, and uh, you know, we, we will eventually uh, see a, a conversion to better plants, but it's going to take management the whole time, because just on the other side of the concrete path is some more Cerecia lester deeds, if I'm thinking sunny cycle. Da, 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 yeah. you know, I got a whole, whole list of, of various things that are they're going to be creeping right back in. That's true. But anyway. Yeah, it's going to take a while before it actually looks like prairie, but it, it's already there if you start looking really close. Cool. So there's some, there's yeah, more just a little bit. Yes. That area that has the best tall grass now, Joe Neal and I did a bird census out there years ago. I have to look up the date. You mean at? At, at, Baker? Lake Fayetteville. Oh, Lake Fayetteville. Lake Fayetteville, where the tall grass is going up and oh, down okay. now. That area when Joe and I did the bird census was bro uh, broom sedge. Broom sedge. That's all the wind yeah. prairie grass. So well, they came up later by themselves. It, it, it is pretty tall grass out there. I don't know. Oh what yeah, grass that's is great. Tall. No, it's really good. Yeah. But I, I tell you, when we started did that census, it was just all broom sedge. It was all broom sedge. And that's when I, I was trapping mammals with uh -huh. uh, uh, natural history class also then. With broom sedge back then. Has it changed much in yeah. your mammal surveying since they started doing the restoration well, work? Yeah, well, they're, it's dominated by grassland mammals. Yeah. That's good. You got the word corner. Oh, yeah. So, oh, when you do your count, your bee count, mm -hmm. are you just taking numbers or are you actually looking at the bees to see if they're? have some of the same problems with mice, et cetera, that I, I, um, are having. Actually, uh, I leave out the boring part of my work, but I do genetics. And so I'm looking at uh, population histories with, with genetic data, but that puts people right to sleep. So I leave that out. But uh, <laughs> that, that, that's what I do when, uh, when I'm not getting to romp around in the woods and the, and the prairies, and I, then I go back to the lab and do genetics. So. Do you check the mites on them? Is that I, what I, I've been, mites are, um, and they're, they're, they're going to be more worried about uh, no seeing uh, which is that, that showed that picture there, like little sort of blue kind of dot looking things, um, are a problem. Uh, forehead flies are, are a parasite that are also a problem. And these are some things that I'm starting to take a look at there. The problem is, in order to look at those, then I have to actually kill the whole organism. Um, I can do my genetic stuff just taking a piece of a leg, and they actually it's not very nice, but they do function pretty well. And um, so, <laughs> so but, it, but it's not as not nice as killing them upright, I think. So, uh, so I haven't done a lot of work on parasites there, but, um, but we do have some, some genetic tools that can get at that. Um, I go back and forth on whether I actually want to do that. So. Amber, you, uh, you talked about building bumblebee houses yeah. or providing space, but one of the biggest things really is like the ice storm we had, if everybody left their hangers, they would have produced a lot more beneficial insects. I mean, taking out dead wood is well known, you know, to be a bad thing to do, but you can't always get people to believe that it's okay to have that ugly limb hanging down in their yard. Yeah, there's probably a lot of stuff that moves into it. But one of, my, one of my best photos this year was on a hanger and it was, uh, what kind of cecopia, one of the moths, beautiful moths, it has these fantastic uh, caterpillars. Well, the hanger was down here, it was a, a, a black uh, 
cherry, and that's one of the main host plants for that particular moth. And those moths only live a, a few weeks in the summer, so it's harder to see them. And it's impossible to see the caterpillars when they're way up there in the high, tall leaves. So those are things that you got to think about. I mean, it's, it's incredible what you learn while I'm people around like you. <laughs> uh, Terry can tell you a lot about that sort of thing, leaving uh, all of the dead wood around for wildlife habitat. There's uh, great bits of it up at Lake Fayetteville, too. I'm sure Amber is going to stick around until we get kicked out of here to answer any more questions anybody has. Everybody, thank you.